Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous asseoir. The chamber is now back in session. Nous reprenons l'audience. Hearing the testimony of the expert witness David Chandler. Et nous allons continuer à entendre la position de notre témoin expert, M. David Chandler. Je voudrais à présent donner la parole aux co-avocats des groupes de partis civils afin de leur permettre de poser leurs questions aux témoins experts. Je vous donne la parole. Je vous remercie, M. le Président, de nous donner la parole. J'ai au préalable une requête à formuler pour les, tous les avocats des partis civils qui souhaiteraient, étant donné que nous avons encore une après-midi et que nous avons la possibilité, il est vrai, aujourd'hui d'avoir en ces lieux la présence d'un expert exceptionnel, je sollicite donc pour les co-avocats des partis civils la possibilité I would like to ask the civil to ask for extra time so that we can put all of the necessary questions to Mr. David Chandler. Of course, this will not take away from the defense because the defense will also enjoy the possibility of uh, having extra time. This is my submission. We would like to have at least an hour. The president. Le président. Regarding the request by the civil party Pour council, à la demande de la co-avocate du groupe parti civil, questioning the expert witness, visant and this à morning, un the co-prosecutors were also granted extra time. So they depend. They civil party councils are now granted extra 15 minutes. Therefore, the total time allocation is 45 minutes, starting from now. Dispose à partir de cet instant de 45 minutes de temps de parole pour vous permettre de poser les questions aux témoins experts. Excusez-moi. Je vous remercie, Ms. Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Monsieur, Monsieur l'expert, Monsieur Chandler, euh, je m'appelle Fabienne Trusnaprouz. Je Fabienne suis euh, co-avocate du groupe numéro 3 am, uh, des partis civils. C'est notre groupe group qui prendra three. la parole donc, en, euh, en premier lieu. Et je voudrais vous poser first, des questions like en premier lieu sur le... Regarding, first of all, Duke's role within S21, you said this morning, indeed, that Duke was fulfilling the expectations of his superiors, which meant, in particular, eliminating traitors and enemies. Je ne, je ne voudrais pas, I, euh, me semble-t-il, que l'on puisse considérer, en tous les cas, c'est ce dont nous allons pouvoir peut-être discuter, I, euh, que euh, Douche était un simple, un simple exécutant. En effet, lorsque l'on reprend a simple executioner. votre, euh, Indeed, votre, when euh, votre we livre, look at your book S21, again, ou le crime impuni des Khmer Rouge en français, when we look at the French vous version, avez évoqué you... euh, la biographie brought up de douche. Vous aviez évoqué uh, cette biographie and, et vous aviez indiqué qu'il avait donc déjà travaillé à partir des années 1970 uh, dans le cadre 70s, de la sécurité, uh, notamment dans le secteur security, 33 près de Phnom Penh, ensuite 33, 25, Penh, uh, dans, uh, dans uh, le secteur and 33, and it, it quand il était uh, donc, 33, attaché à la sécurité du directeur responsable de la sécurité du secteur 33, qu'il avait rencontré 
agree that he met uh, l'ethnographe uh, Monsieur Bizot, Mr. Bizot the ethnographer, vous avez repris, and, uh, la citation and de you Monsieur Bizot, stated Monsieur dans, Bizot's uh, quote dans, uh, uh, votre in livre, your book uh, page on page 39, index 0035728 in French. Uh, qui, uh, and um, Monsieur Bizot, sorti de cette épreuve, Monsieur effaré par le fanatisme de Dutch. Selon lui, Duke when he came out of Dutch croyait his, que les Cambodgiens uh, qui avaient des points de vue différents at, du sien étaient des traîtres et des menteurs. Uh, Dukes believed that people who had prisonnier different prisonnier opinions for him were considered as traitors, as liars. Vous avez indi and donc, vous avez repris therefore, you used Bizot this Mr. Bizot's quote, loin, vous avez and later on, you indicated as well that Duke had acquired skills in the field of security over the course of time. It is probably between 1972 and 1973 that he elaborated his very sophisticated concept of traitors, of treason, by coming up with the concept of string of traitors in order to purge what were known as the Khmer Hanoi. And then afterwards, you added that the merciless uh, characteristic of this uh, purification campaign corresponded to the burgeoning administrative style that was specific to Duke and was going to give an idea of S21's Donc, operational entendu, mode. So moi, for me, it Duke seems therefore that Duke été, was not uh, um, donc, uh, chosen uh, 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 randomly. And, uh, and uh, une there was indeed, de uh, he had developed de, over the course of time. De, uh, First of all, uh, regarding his biography, can you dire, please tell us in relation to this element that I just described and in relation to what you told us this morning, if Duke finally was only applying and doing what he was told to do, or if, on the other hand, he had, let's say, improved the system, if he had made S21 become what it was, and uh, if he had in that way improved the system, so to say. Uh, Thank you. There's a lot of <coughs> questions inside that question. Uh, the last one, uh, <coughs> I think, he, I, I don't think I ever said he was merely the servant of the people above him. I think he's, his, one of his main objectives at S21 was to satisfy their requirements. Had he failed to do that, uh, his would have been in danger. That was an obvious thing. But you're quite right, and I think I've tried to make this point this morning, uh, that he was an enthusiastic and proud administrator of S21 who worked out uh, techniques and organizational uh, methodology uh, from scratch. I said also that there was there were no precedents for this kind of place. Uh, the very limited experience he'd had in the Civil War was not quite enough for a, an institution of this size. So he was obviously innovating, uh, as you say, improving uh, all the time. And I think he was doing uh, not only what his superiors obviously thought was a reasonably good job, or, he, or we would have known that he would have been uh, dismissed, but also what he himself thought was a, not just a satisfactory job, but an excellent job. I think he wanted to excel in this job and indeed in other things earlier in his career. He wanted to excel as a student. He wanted to excel as a uh, apprentice revolutionary. And throughout his uh, professional life, I think he was interested in not just uh, serving those above him. That wasn't that hard, really, but to serve them uh, with enthusiasm and skill that he could be proud of himself. Avec enthousiasme en excédant ce qu'on attendait de lui. Je vous remercie, Ms. Monsieur Chandler. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Chandler. Uh, justement, uh, pour rebondir uh, indeed, sur ce que vous voulez dire, to uh, get back to what you just said, uh, en fait, uh, there 
il y a eu pendant ces débats euh, quelques euh, difficultés en ce qui concerne justement peut-être le rôle euh, de euh, Douche euh, au moment des interrogatoires ou sur la pratique euh, de euh, la torture. En effet, euh, il a à torture. quelques reprises indiquées qu'il n'était pas aux interrogatoires et qu'il euh, ne savait pas exactement, exactement comment se pratiquait la torture. Est-ce que, véritablement, au vu des documents well, que vous avez, you, dont vous avez pris connaissance, au vu de l'analyse de la personnalité de Duke's que vous avez faite, au vu, au vu euh, véritablement de son, euh, de son cursus, euh, given, uh, his, uh, vous pensez qu'il pouvait uh, ignorer quoi que ce soit de ce qui pouvait se passer à S21 et qu'il ne pouvait pas ne pas être l'initiateur de tout ce qui se passait derrière à S21 parce qu'il n'était pas l'initiateur de tout ce qui se passait à S21. I'll uh, split your question into its last two components, I think. Uh, he was <coughs> made it his business, certainly, to be aware of what was happening. I don't think he wanted the prison to get out of hand. He knew, I think, that on occasion some of the interrogators uh, got out of hand and behaved badly, and these were people who were chastised and in some cases even brought into S21 as prisoners. Uh, I think he was a person who trusted the people directly underneath him to keep him informed of the daily activities of the prison. I think in, when important prisoners came into the prison, he paid more personal attention than he did to minor people. Uh, but the second part of your question, uh, or your remarks, I, I, I can't uh, buy into the idea that he was the sole initiator of what was going on in S21. One of the characteristics of Chinese style revolution and the Cambodian revolution was the amount of leeway given to individual people to behave in a revolutionary manner, whatever that meant. Uh, so that he was hoping that his subordinates, as sincere and uh, active revolutionaries would behave in a properly revolutionary manner, again, whatever that means. So he, he would, I don't think he was the sole initiator or the sole sort of uh, monitor of what was happening. I think he, through his immediate subordinates, I think he was pretty well aware of what was going on. I don't think a whole lot escaped his attention. But I think, uh, in other words, I, I am, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that my impression from what I've read and, and uh, studied is that he was a very able, efficient administrator of the place he was He did a good job at what he was supposed to be doing. And he was part of that. Euh, compétent, il faisait ce qu'on, il faisait ce qu'il devait faire pour que l'endroit tourne. Je vous remercie, Ms. Monsieur Chandler. Uh, je vous, Chandler. Nous avons uh, évoqué, et vous l'avez évoqué, sur demande de Monsieur le juge Lavergne, well qui a uh, fait justement Lavergne, remarquer que vous parliez uh, souvent uh, de déshumanisation au sein de S21 dans uh, votre S21 livre. Alors, vous book. avez évoqué and, uh, la déshumanisation, bien sûr, uh, des uh, prisonniers, mais je voudrais revenir sur la But I'd like to get back to the dehumanization uh, of the staff, uh, gardiens, the guards, and um, maybe uh, mainly of the interrogators, uh, car, uh, à des faits, because uh, indeed we might wonder how 
sans uh, regret we commettre can les actes qui ont commit été such acts without any emotion and without any regret. Et je voudrais and que vous nous donniez would like you to plus d'explications sur more ce phénomène, sachant que, uh, effet, phenomenon. Uh, dans uh, votre uh, livre, vous avez apporté une conclusion book, extrêmement intéressante in sur ce uh, point-là. Uh, je, point. je me permets and de uh, la reprendre. Elle est page 186, code RN 0035743. Les explications des phénomènes comme S21 résident dans notre capacité à ordonner et à obéir, à nous souder contre les étrangers, à nous perdre au sein du groupe, à aspirer à la perfection et à la compassion et à décharger notre haine et notre, notre confusion sur d'autres individus, souvent sans défense, particulièrement lorsque nous y sommes encouragés par des gens que nous respectons. Est-ce que vous pouvez développer un peu ce que, comment vous voyez uh, ce problème vis-à-vis -vis des gens qui travaillaient à S21 perceive this, uh, uh, regarding the people who were working at uh, S21. Well, you've quoted uh, from the last paragraph of my book where I am trying to sum up as best I can what seemed to me to be happening, uh, not only at S21, but at several other facilities and several other moments of history where this kind of behavior went, uh, went on. These could include uh, the massacres in Indonesia in 65, the concentration camps in the Holocaust, the uh, jails in uh, South America in the 1970s, uh, behavior of the Greek colonels. Uh, it's, it's, it's a global phenomenon. S21 is not by no means unique. Uh, the kinds of behavior that can be unleashed uh, by people uh, operating with permission uh, against people whom they uh, have already dehumanized themselves. Uh, you notice all the euphemisms that are used in warfare. We very seldom say that the people are killing people. You say that having body count, collateral damage, prisoners, or smashing enemies, for example. The word kill is not used. Uh, I didn't reach that last paragraph through any empirical investigation. That last paragraph ran to me, and I wrote it quite quickly, I must admit, as a way of trying to come to grips with the whole uh, phenomenon of S21 and more, and more close to home, to come to grips with the uh, four years that I'd spent working on the book. I didn't want to say <coughs> that what was happening at S21 was done by another kind of people operating far away, but I wanted to suggest that under certain conditions, happily that have been non-existent in my own life, under certain conditions, almost anyone could be led to perform uh, activities of this kind. Now, the staff of S21, um, rather like uh, some of the uh, people studied uh, in the Holocaust, especially by the author Christopher Browning, um, once their behavior was routinized, and once these people were not punished, and once they were permitted to go further and further steps, we find the same thing in the Cultural Revolution among the Red Guards. Uh, they didn't pull up short. They operated generally with more enthusiasm rather than less. Why this is true, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a dark side, I think, to all of us, and that was the point I was trying to make in that last paragraph, uh, that does not come, as I say, from empirical research on the staff of S21, but from uh, years of immersion in this subject. Voir ce, les leçons qu'on pouvait tirer de, de ces années euh, de recherche. 
Je, remis, Ms. je vous remercie, M. Chandler. Je n'aurai pas d'autres questions. Je vais laisser la parole no uh, au co-avocat du groupe 3. Je vais maintenant laisser mes collègues du groupe 3 prendre la parole. But uh, some co council. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Le Your Conseil. Honor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour. I am a counsel for Civil Party Group 3. I have some questions for Professor David Chandler. Des questions à poser à David in Chandler. responding to my colleague's question, you said la question de the accused was proud of his fier work. De son travail. And that he fulfilled his duty strictly during ses at both locations at M13 and at S21. My question is Ma question est la the smashing of the enemy and the targeting the enemy, as you stated in your book. Vous avez pu le décrire dans votre livre. Can you explain to us? Sur ce sujet, pouvez that the Khmer Rouge leaders, who are the most responsible, and that the accused, pour les, pour les responsables who is the top leader of S21, the smashing, is it the success of the democratic Cambodian regime, or is it in order to fulfill the moment of great leap forward? Simplement dans le cadre de ce mouvement du grand bond en avant. Où est-ce qu'on se situe? I'm not sure how to answer the last part of your question. I think uh, we said, I said earlier, it's been brought up by many people, that secrecy was a key characteristic of the democratic Cambodian regime. Certainly, until things began to get seriously difficult or complicated, Smok Smain, as they say in Khmer, in 1978, another characteristic of the revolution was its headlong pace and its headlong and Enthusiasm and its self its assurance that its revolutionary behavior would carry everything before it, the problems would no longer arise. I think it is this kind of absolute confidence that they were on the right track was very dangerous. That no one was given time to ask questions. No one was given time to hesitate. There was no uh, chance to certainly contradict. Now we know very well, certainly we couldn't contradict the leadership. So that it became, the regime became rather like a, a waterfall in which everyone was caught up. Thank you. Thank you, question. Professor. Je vous remercie, Monsieur Chandler. My next question is related to the crimes committed si at S21. Related to the crimes committed at S21. You stated that the activity of smashing the enemy started with the smashing of the former regime officials, and later on, the smashing was. With the cadres inside the party, can you explain to us whether this movement of smashing is a concrete plan made by the Communist Party of Cambodia, or whether it was initiated based on the suspicious thought of the activities that might try to overthrow the Communist Party of Cambodia? You're, you're getting here to a, a very serious, um, I mean, I'm not meaning to demean the rest of your question, your question is excellent, but a very serious issue uh, regarding uh, the history of democratic Cambodia. And this has to do also, as I know, the, uh, the uh, tribunal is, is examining this issue, <coughs> whether what happened under 
the Khmer Rouge can be characterized as genocide or not. The key ingredient of genocide, according to the UN Convention anyway, that which is the place to look for definitions rather than somewhere else, is intent. You have to find evidence or proof that the regime or its leaders specifically intended to smash particular ethnic groups, not, not their own people. Whether you find that I was talking in my si previous answer, or one of my answers, et bien voilà. pour I was sur une de mes mentioning how a certain amount of, of confidence was given to people and support was given to people who were voyez, behaving in what they felt was a truly revolutionary manner. And here, je the parallels to draw, I think, are with the uh, Cultural Revolution in China, avec la where révolution culturelle what was called en Chine, ultra-left deviation une déviation was not punished. In other words, the further left you could go, the more praise you got. Plus so it seems to me that if the general idea of et donc smashing enemies, des ennemis, not so much the revenge killings that took place in 75 against uh, former members of the vis -vis des Khmer Republic Army, who, when they were uh, qui, disarmed, ils ont été désarmés, could just be assassinated. Uh, eh bien, il not talking about that, I'm talking about the smashing of Ici, internal enemies de des ennemis de inside the party and est how cela dont il est à du parti. the language is always very vague coming et from the top and also we also lack a lot of the language coming from the top as I said many of the documents are, are just not in our possession but certainly mais certainement, je pense que you never I, no document that I'm aware of has the leadership Aucun declaring that too many enemies are being killed. Déclare que In other le words, the number is never excessive. Que les so nombres ne sont jamais you're excessifs. getting close to a kind of uh, intent that's quite complicated, I think, in other words. Pour arriver à établir une sorte, une forme d'intention, je pense qu'ici, c'est un exercice assez compliqué qu'on entreprend. Thank you, Professor. Question, je vous I remercie, do not have any further questions Schindler, for you. Je plus de questions à vous poser. Due to the time limit, I would like to give the floor de temps to other civil party councils to put questions to you. Thank you. À mes confrères pour poursuivre. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chandler. My name is Silke Stutzinski. I'm a lawyer for civil parties. Um, Bonjour, I would Monsieur like Chandler. to put first a question to Maître you about the general nature um, and this is the following. Je souhaiterais uh, vous poser could, une première question. Do you have, according to your research, um, Oh, could you tell us, I uh, rephrase, could you tell us uh, what is the duration, uh, the length of stay of prisoners in tool slang? Um, what did your research, what time frame did your research bring up? Est-ce que vos travaux de recherche vous ont permis d'avoir une idée plus précise sur ce sujet I'm not exactly sure what the upper limit would be. I know some of the senior people were tool slang for several months, in other words, more than two months. But the shortest span would be the people who were driven in in trucks and then the trucks were immediately sent out of the prison. They weren't even enrolled in the prison. The trucks just went out to the uh, killing fields, partly because the prison was too crowded and partly because the prisoners coming in in the trucks were not uh, of high, including any high-ranking responsible cadre. So, in other words, the length of time would go from none to several months. I, I think somewhere in my book, I can't exactly pinpoint it, I tried to work out what seemed to me in the documents I read the length of time uh, from their entry to their to the end of their interrogation, which of course means uh, pretty closely to their uh, execution. And I found most of the people were there between two and three weeks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. The accused uh, told us Maître about one prisoner, uh, Mr. Ponton, Monsieur Ponton. Um, who has been there for 20 months. Uh, could you, mois, qui what would you say, 21, according to your mois. knowledge and research results, could this be possible? And I add, without being interrogated in et, deaths in Tulslang. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I can't have given an answer. I didn't run across this specific Je prisoner or that specific information. Uh, and I'm not, I haven't been present at enough of the sessions of the tribunal to judge how this statement fits into other statements by the accused. Uh, it seems, and it seems to me quite strange that someone would be kept there that long. Uh, on the other hand, uh, again, this is just supposition. I don't see what cause is served uh, by inventing this information. So I'm happy to hear corroboration if there is some, but it seems, does seem quite strange to me. Thank you. Same uh, to us. Um, I would like to move on now to um, confessions of interrogators that you have um, read and analyzed, and there I would like to um, draw your attention to those confessions of uh, Mr. Buteng, Mr. Wong Sam, Sam Matt, and uh, Mr. Chiam Mei and Mr. Sok Ra. These are interrogators that uh, appear in your book or are quoted in your book, and it is found with the footnote, uh, endnotes on page 131. And uh, my question is these interrogators who talked about. Um, sexual assault that they uh, have committed and uh, that they admit in their confessions. Could you describe um, what they have confessed? Effectivement, quelque chose. Qu'est-ce que vous en savez? The president, uh, we note Mr. Francois, who is on his feet. You take the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. Je fais objection you, à cette Mr. question. Il me semblait que la Chambre avait rappelé la Convention internationale contre la torture dont est parti le Cambodge et qui interdit d'utiliser la substance des aveux. Je souhaiterais qu'on rappelle cette règle à ma consoeur et que le témoin soit dispensé de répondre à cette question. To be told that he need not answer this question. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to respond to this. Of course, uh, I have the torture, anti torture Mr. convention Kuczynski, in oui, my mind. La convention sur la torture, et je n'oublie pas ce point. The president, uh, the objection is sustained, uh, and that uh, uh, civil party lawyer is advised to rephrase the question and that uh, question should not be related to any content of the confession uh, that uh, taken by means of torture. However, I would like to say that, of course, here since the start of this trial, of course, all parties, including the, the Chamber, have referred to confessions. But I rephrase and um, try the following to put to you, Mr. Chandler, that is, um, you mentioned these confessions uh, that I have listed, uh, these uh, interrogators, um, and I would like to know if you found Et on these confessions which um, admit 
sexual crimes or sexual assaults, harassments, rapes, uh, if you found on these confessions annotations? As far as I recall, there were no annotations on these confessions. A point I'd like to raise on these particular ones, though, the questions, uh, interrogations of interrogators at S21 are a peculiar uh, category. They're a peculiar category because it seems to me the people interrogating these interrogators would have been probably aware of some of the things that these people had actually done. So it's not a question of somebody coming in from 200 miles away and saying he belongs to the CIA. It's a question of a colleague saying something that I don't think would have required torture to elicit from this person. The person was facing his colleagues. He knew he was doomed. He also did not know that he would ever be released. He knew what was going to happen. It seems to me that these uh, confessions are the closest ones to being true in the collection. That's what I, that's my own view. Uh, certainly, uh, you have evidence from, I think, uh, Cox Ross and others uh, said that there was some evidence of sexual assaults in the prison. Rare, but interestingly, these were being punished. This is the, this is the point, but part of the point of this, these confessions. These are being not only punished with re-education sent to pray saw, but these people are condemned to death for committing those, for admitting to those, those, those acts. So I don't think, uh, I mean, I agree certainly with what uh, the lawyer for the defense has mentioned, but my feeling is that these confessions uh, did not require torture to be elicited. Some of them, these, these ones would have been people who have known what was happening. They knew what had happened. They told their colleagues what had happened, and then that was it. Thank you. Um, my next um, question refers to um, a statement of the accused who told us uh, that his former school teacher was raped or as the accused understood at this time uh, was sexual abused and um, he learned uh, at the time that this rape happened and he did not punish the uh, perpetrator and after consulting Son Sen, that is what uh, the accused uh, told us. According to your uh, knowledge as an expert, uh, how does this practice um, can match with the general view that sexual crimes were severely punished, which is a common perception uh, I had read that uh, statement by uh, the defendant, and it seems to me at that stage of his uh, stewardship over S21, he was not only getting uh, more disillusioned, but he also felt, I think, that were these people with whom he'd been close given anything like a special treatment, that this would have been noticed by the people on top. And I think that's why he went to Son Sen about this particular case, because these were people that he, and Son Sen knew these were his former patrons. These were people he, he was very sorry to see come into the prison, but they were people with whom he been close. Uh, beyond that, I, don't, I, I, I can't get into that except to look at the other confessions that you cited, which seemed to me to be a case of people who are uh, confessing to having uh, done those things, and actually the person who uh, assaulted uh, the wife of his former school teacher was later brought in, later brought in S21 and made this confession. That's how we have the text of it. Um, my last uh, question uh, to you is, um, what is your conclusion um, about the risk of females um, who were imprisoned in Tulsleng and uh, related to being at risk to become 
victim of sexual violence in Queensland. And if you could elaborate also on maybe a vulnerable group among females, the most vulnerable group among females. Concernant les groupes les plus vulnérables parmi les femmes. Uh, okay. I don't think I can elaborate on which group is the most vulnerable or, or make an assessment as to how often this happened. I think uh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't, my, just what I've learned about this place, uh, it was not open season to use a horrible phrase, on women prisoners. These were not instantly considered to be uh, uh, available for members of staff to molest and abuse. Uh, there's just not evidence to prove that. Um, I think, on the other hand, uh, the situation in the prison was pretty volatile. And I'm not excusing any, anybody's behavior, but this is a locked up compound full of young men who, on some occasions, I think certainly behaved in an abominable fashion and inexcusable fashion, but I don't get the feeling that had this kind of, these kind of offenses been absolutely generalized, that the prison would have uh, continued to operate it as it should have, and I think it would have come to the attention of certainly Deut and other people that this was going on and it would have been stopped. But this is supposition. I don't have the evidence. What I cannot do is tell you who were the more vulnerable of the women. My suspicion would be probably that women with better connections who are the wives of higher ranking cadre would be less vulnerable, but that's just a guess. Thank you for your answer. Only uh, last, um, uh, what I want to add is what I found in uh, your book that is on page 38, where you are talking uh, that uh, Vietnamese uh, female prisoners um, were highly at risk. Right, well, then let me withdraw what I said. I hadn't remembered that I'd written that, but th those people would be certainly the most highly uh, at risk ones. These were people who were uh, considered just ipso facto as uh, outside the human race at the time the war had started with Vietnam. So they would be indeed, if you want the most vulnerable group, that would be it. I, uh, I should have remembered that sentence of mine. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. Um, I'm running out of time and uh, give the floor now to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Épuisé. Je laisse donc la parole à mes collègues. Good afternoon, sir. My name is um, Alain Werner, and I'm a counsel for um, Civil Party Group One with my national colleague, Tishrina. And I have uh, 30 minutes and a half to ask you my questions. I was intending to put quite um, several um, statements for you. I would be grateful if you. As much as you Je can, if you could just answer briefly like this, maybe I will be able to put to you everything I was, uh, I was hoping to. Um, I would like to start just with uh, one thing. Um, George Cartwright this morning asked you about um, the last plan and asked you about who would, um, the reason why you thought Dutch was the last plan. I just one question very brief on this. Um, page 22 of your book, you said the last plan was is shed of. It's a French name. I'm not sure how to pronounce it in English. But is, is shed of. I just want to ask you, why did you say that? To me, oh, yeah, it seems to me to be the most extended uh, discourse uh, by Deut on a subject that was not related to a specific confession. It was his attempt to draw together what he saw and uh, interpreted as evidence and is it, it was kind of like drawing a mathematical set of mathematical formulas onto a blackboard or whiteboard and to him I would just guess I can't speak for him of course uh, unless of course the whole thing was 
made up to, uh, to fool uh, people above him, and I, I doubt that was the case, that this was a true and sensible uh, interpretation of the data that had come to his attention. Thank you. This morning you, you spoke about this, this um, at the end of the confessions, this list of names that the prisoners were requested to, um, to give. In your book, page 38, you spoke about um, something else. You spoke about um, summaries that were done by the staff itself, page uh, 105. And let me read you what you said. You said, name listed in the strings, strings sorry, were used as a basis for additional arrests. And then you said that. They were also consolidated, type written summaries, bring together the names of people affiliated with certain military units, sectors, offices, factories, or work sites. Do you stand by that? So I will have to stand by it, I guess. Oui, j'imagine. I would like to follow up on that, and considering now what you said this morning about this list of names, enemies, traitors that the prisoners were supposed to give, and then this work product produced by the, um, the staff at S21, before you, as you probably know, Dr. Hutchinson testified, here, he testified in May, and myself, I asked him, because he spoke as well about this list, these names, and this work product produced by the staff, and I asked him, um, according to him, who, um, who ordered, if anyone, uh, those uh, material to be produced, and here is what he said, page 18, the position of Mr. Hutchinson, um, trial day 23, 28 May. Here is what we said. Council, I cannot immediately recall ever having seen an order per se to produce such lists other than an order directed at a specific prisoner. prisoner. My understanding is that this was a practice developed and refined by the accused person himself, and that the accused person's superiors found this practice so helpful that this one, one reason, he eventually was promoted to be the chief of S21. Would you agree with uh, Dr. Hutchinson on that? It sounds reasonable. Uh, I don't have any documentary proof to go along with that. Uh, it's a reasonable supposition, yes. Thank you. Um, you spoke in your book, page 38 of your book, about the condition of detention. And here is what you said, page 38. You said, isolation, poor food, silence were crucial to breaking the prisoners down in preparation for their interrogations. For, as Foucault has suggested, quote, Solitude is the primary condition of total submission. Now, witnesses in this court spoke as well about lack of hygiene, prisoners being shackled in the cells, um, not possibility to go to the bathroom, so using cans, people being beaten up in the cells. Would, would you agree to say that this other um, characteristic were also devised um, in preparation for interrogation and to break down, as you said, and to prepare for final submission? Would you, would you agree with that? Sorry, so your mic was not in. Yes, I do agree. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm rushing in answers. my fault. Oui, je suis d'accord. No, I'm grateful for you for an, uh, rushing Merci. answers because it allowed me to to mm. rush as well. Um, Nous avons effectivement peu de temps. So, would you would you agree that this appalling just to to, to finish this point? Would you agree that these appalling conditions of detention, um, when were part and parcel of this system to break the, pris the prisoners down and to get the confession, the information at all costs? Would you agree with that? Yeah. 
Yes, except that, of course, it started the minute they arrived in the trucks. It was unrelenting. These people, when they arrived in the trucks, were already garbage. They were already uh, non-humans. Uh, the objective was to keep them in that condition and, uh, yes, to break them down. And, and uh, mercy was have had no uh, place in the prison. But, yeah, it was all headed down a track toward the interrogation and execution. That was the, the way the whole place was uh, moving. Thank you, sir. You said page 85 of your book, and I'm just curious because there was no, there was no footnote, so I just wanted to, would like to know why or how could you say that. You said that it's possible that higher-ranking prisoners during um, confessions were given other confessions to read. My understanding is that you were saying that maybe they were given the confessions of other prisoners to read while they were themselves uh, being interrogated. And there was no footnote. I know it's a very long time you wrote this book, but can you remember um, why you said that? Mais vous vous souvenez de la raison pour laquelle vous avez écrit cela? On donnait à lire aux prisonniers importants les aveux d'autres. I should have had a footnote. Page 109. But I think it's still true. I don't know where I got the, the sentence. Oui, ça doit être vrai si je l'ai écrit, mais effectivement, j'aurais pu insérer une page. And then on page, and don't worry, there was a footnote on this one. On page 88, um, you spoke about the fact that the confession then at the end, or the final product, there were six copies done. And you explained very uh, in detail which copy were went. Well, which could be how, how it was distributed. Um, do you know Do you know who invented the system of, of mul multiple copies of confession then? Some for the upper echelon, some sent to, to the various units. Do you have any idea why or who decided that? Who ordered that this system? I think, uh, I think it was probably. Uh, it strikes me as consistent with other innovations by the defendant at making a efficient and, uh, you know, uh, exemplary uh, institution. Thank you. Um, page 132 of your book, you said this. Dutch was merciless, telling an interrogator on one occasion, I quote, beat the prisoner until he tells everything, beat him to get at the deep things. And, and there was a footnote on this one. Um, do you stand by that, that Dutch was merciless? Uh, Yes, I do. I, I mean, being merciful would have got nobody anywhere in that prison. So uh, maybe this statement uh, I used to illustrate maybe a certain uh, intense mercilessness that may have been uh, not quite as strong on other occasions, but uh, it seems to me a person who comes out with sentences like that is, uh, is merciless. Now, so there is, a, as you know, him how he came here to testify. And on the 20th of July, um, I put to him um, an earlier statement he gave. And this is, in this statement, he had said, um, in this office 21, I heard Mr. Dutch and Mr. Ho said that we should kill all and keep only 4 million. So I asked him about that in court, and here is what he said. As I already stated early on during the study session lectured by Dutch, he personally and directly said that everyone would be, would be smashed or killed, not only the people who were detained at S21, I believe, because he said that we had to kill them all. So there were prison, prisons all across the country, so I mean everyone would be killed. And later on the same day, my colleague who is not here today, Mr. Hong Kim Soon, asked him again about that, and here is what he said. Dutch stated, stated, he said everyone has to be killed, leaving only 4 million people, and then later on he said everyone shall be, shall be smashed to bits. And that statement I still remember ever since. Now, based on your Year, years of research, does it seem to you possible or likely that Dutch would have said something like that during the training session, sir? I have not seen that. Uh, the, I, I'm not sure that the document of that particular study session has survived, because I certainly looked at a lot of those. Uh, it's a vivid memory on the part of uh, Him Hui. Uh, it seems to me that it's not unthinkable that it should have been said. Uh, I think uh, 
On the other hand, the, the business of saying that up to half uh, the population of Cambodia at that time, 4 million, that, that figure, that, that seems harsher than I would have thought. But I mean, I, I, can't, I don't want to disrespect someone's memory, and I haven't read the document coming from the study session, but that figure of 4 million stuck in his head. Now, I don't know who. If, if at that point the defendant really believed that at least half the country was uh, of no use to the revolution, uh, in which case this would be the strongest statement along those lines that I've read in my time of studying the Khmer Rouge. Now, so, um, as you, you may or you may not know, um, the accused in the court I explain, explained several times that Sun Sen was monitoring and paying very close attention to his work, at least until 77, where he was sent to the battlefield. Now, you said this morning that um, Sun Sen and the other member of the standing committee had, would have had no interest for prisoners at S21 who are not important. I just want um, to read you something that um, Dr. Etchison said and about the same topic. And I would like to know if you could agree on that. 27 May 2009, um, page 90, and he gave an example about the, the same topic about Sun Sen. He said, for example, in the Ministry of Social Action, many very ordinary illiterate peasants, girls, were given a few hours on training on how to make injection with a syringe when were then declared to be nurses and put to work in hospitals. A surprising number of such people ended up being tortured and executed at S21 on accusation, accusation of being CIA agents or KGB agents. It is indeed difficult for me to believe that someone with the heavy national responsibilities that Sun Sen carried would spend any time at all paying much attention to the interrogation or execution of such individuals. Would you agree with that assertion of Dr. Hutchinson? Yes, it seems like a, a uh, exception to the rule. Uh, but if uh, it happened, it happened. I mean, he, he might, uh, I don't know why a purge swept through the hospitals. It could have been that uh, a particular uh, high-ranking cadre was connected with those hospitals and uh, Sun Sen wanted to make sure that all the confessions fell into line with the uh, uh, persecution of that particular cadre. I'm not, I can't quite remember, I can't remember at all, actually, who that might have been. But, uh, you know, Came sorry to, 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 to interrupt you, sir, but I think, I think you misunderstood. It's probably because uh, it's my French accent and I'm reading very fast because I'm running out of time. Um, basically, what I read meant that something would have not known about that. I'm sorry, that's what I read. Sorry, could you repeat that, sir? Uh, again, it would probably be the same uh, issue, and I mean, maybe maybe the defendant remembers this particular case uh, well. I don't remember it from my work, but uh, there was some reason to concentrate on this particular group, possibly because of some links with a senior, a relatively senior figure, and all these confessions had to be uh, laid in a line and brought in, in, uh, in coordination with each other. But that's, again, supposition. I'm not, I'm not familiar with these particular texts, at least now. I might have been 10 years ago. So can I, so, Your Honor, can I ask one more question? Thank you. Um, so I would like to to ask you one final question, and um, about you spoke at the end about the, uh, the idea of choice and whether or not the, the accused had any choice or margin of maneuver. I just would like to put to you something Mam Nai said in this court, and just to have your view, and then I will be, uh, will be finished with my question. Um, he said that on the 15th July 2009, page 47, and here is what he said. Other than those in the unit, those who joined the revolution with me, when, whenever Dutch let me know, I could protect them because Dutch would listen to my opinions. And if someone had not made revolution with me, I would not dare defend him. Question. 
The last time you talk about seeing one of your students get into trouble and you could not help, how was that? And here is what Mam Nine said. My student, whom I did not dare help, had been arrested by the base and sent. I met him. I did not dare because he had already been arrested. If I had known before and they had told me that this person was in trouble, I could have guaranteed that he was a student of mine. So that was actually a statement, prior statement put to the witness. And the witness, I asked him, could you confirm that that was the truth? And he said yes. Now, are you able to comment on that? Does it seem plausible to you that some high-ranking cadres had some margin of maneuver to protect, in, in some circumstances, to protect their own people? Oh, I'm sure it happened. Uh, the, the point uh, is it, it, all revealed in the statement. Once someone had been arrested, the whole machinery of the waterfall, if you like, was set in motion. There's no way to pull someone out of that. Uh, uh, rapidly moving process, but I think that probably all through uh, DK there were negotiations to stop that process from taking place. There was a great deal of networking, as we say, in the, in, in nowadays going on between people, protecting their friends and, uh, and uh, subordinates protecting their, uh, their patrons. Uh, there's quite a lot of evidence that despite the policy of flattening out uh, Cambodian society by the revolution, that a lot of these old hierarchies, or hierarchical behavior rather, remained fully in force and that uh, patrons were expected to protect at least some of their clients. Clients were expected to uh, protect or help some of their patrons. It's the way Cambodian society has worked as far as we can tell since the first uh, writing in the recorded writing in the 7th century. Thank you very much. I have a further question and let me tell you that some of us came here because we were at your book, so I'm very grateful. So I've been able to put your questions. Thank you. Vos questions. Je devrais après, je dois également euh, vous dire que certaines personnes sont venues ici aujourd'hui voilà, parce qu'elles avaient lu oui. votre livre également. The president. Le président. It is now convenient time to take à présent venu de faire une pause. And uh, we Et will resume at 10 to 3. À 14h50. The court official is instructed to make sure that the Mr. David Chandler is assisted uh, during the break so that Monsieur we can have pause. some refreshment. The greffier, all right. Mesdames et messieurs, levez-vous.